any musically talented people actually I'd, um, I'd quite to, quite like to hear from you guys um, if you're, you're a supporter of Wickham Wanderers and, and you're musically talented we, we'd love to uh, love to play your music um, in the background of our, of our videos um, and, and just things like that really so it's a show for the supporters by the supporters and, and I think that's, that's something key that I can't stress enough with the actual programme itself still technically in its embryonic stages and at, at this point it is still basically a one-on-one -on -one yeah. interview uh, segment. What are your plans to actually expand it? Because obviously you've brought me on board as a co-host so you've yeah. obviously had plans to expand it and take oh, it yes. in a different direction. Yeah. Um, could you give a little bit of uh, an insight into the viewers and the supporters watching what you would like the show to become and mm. what precisely you would like to offer them which is different? So I think um, it, it changes a lot, um, it changes even every day. Every day in between sort of filming programmes and, and even now while I'm talking to you and, and the viewers that are watching, um, it, it changes a lot. Uh, at one point we had an idea to, to try and make it a bit similar to uh, Sky Sports Soccer AM, um, Football Focus on BBC, we had, we had tried to make something similar to that, um, and, and, and things like that really, or, or even just a, a, a panel show where, where we invite supporters on, people from the club on, to, uh, to interact with us and, and discuss any, anything that's, that's sort of come up or... Um, the games that, that have been played um, in between sort of filming uh, or even standing outside the ground um, tonight or, or any other night or during the day or whatever and, and talking to supporters as they come in or, or as they leave or even inviting an away supporter to come on and, and discuss uh, anything that's going on with their club. And give them some abuse as yeah. well. <laughs> oh yeah, especially if you beat them, that's always good. <laughs> yeah, good. Um, so basically in a nutshell, um, we're looking to offer something which is different that the football club currently offers. We've got several ideas in the pipeline in the direction we'd like to take the programme. Of course, we're still in, uh, as I say, the embryonic stages. If anybody out there has got any ideas that they'd suggest to us, then we're more than, we're very, ha we're very happy to open our ears to that. Um, of course, we're living in an age now of social media rules, if you like. Mm. Um, of course, we've got the forums online and the, uh, the fan page where people can express their views and have a bit of fun on there as well with banter. This is just a platform to add to that. So if people would like to come on and you know give their views and express how they're feeling about the football club, you're more than welcome to. Of you're more than welcome to. Um, now, uh, as you may recall, in the last show, um, Liam asked me to pick my all-time look and one was 11. Um, and uh, as a rebuttal to him, uh, I've challenged him to pick his all-time 11, but with a small twist. Um, none of his players, um, or should, I should, excuse me, I should say, none of my players are actually eligible to feature in his side. So that should make it interesting. As you know, there's about a, just over a 10-year age gap between us, so it's virtually a generation apart. So when we started watching the pool of players, look, myself I could basically pick from was like slightly larger and it might give a nice indication on for someone who's a generation older how different their side may look to someone who's a generation younger so for example if I were to speak to my dad for example who's uh, let's say heyday was in the 1970s uh, he would pick names out of the air that I may not necessarily know of or a lot of their young, younger supporters say their 20s you know would know so that would be interesting. So um, just as a recap, um, my 11 uh, from the last show uh, was Paul Hiding goal, Jason Cousins right back and uh, Mickey Bell left back. Uh, the centre halves were Terry Evans and Glyn Creaser. Uh, the midfields uh, on the wings, we had Steve Guppy on the left and David Carroll on the right. Uh, we had Steve Brown and Keith Ryan as the midfield enforcers. And up front, uh, the goal scorer, Mark West, and the target man, Keith Scott. Very old fashioned 4 4 2, but as Leicester have proved this season, it works. And um, yeah, I've, I've got to ask now, because this has generally intrigued me. Now, I don't know who Liam's picked. I wanted this to be nice and organic, and uh, we shall see. So, the goalkeeper, Liam. 
Now, you've been watching since the Laurie Sanchez era. Yeah. So, I've got a rough idea, you know, where this is going with a goalkeeper. Um, but you've seen a few in your time here. Yeah. And could you just throw me out a short list of players first before you actually name the goalkeeper? Well, the, first, the first proper goalkeeper was... Um, or the, the first one of the goalkeepers that, that were on this list was uh, Nicky Ball uh, for his exploits uh, during the, the Warwick era um, and of course the, the early part of Ainsworth's uh, managerial career. Um, he, he was very close to making it, um, but not quite. Um, as there was towards the end of his time, I wasn't a great fan of his, so I didn't feel that. He was sort of justified to to be in the company of, of some of these players that that I'm going to pick. Um, Matt Ingram speaks for itself. Um, played his first game for QPR the other day. Um, speaks for itself, really. Um, yeah. Uh, just to add to that, um, as I may have mentioned in an interview before, I do happen to work with a few young lads who actually grew up with Matt, going through the football clubs at Bowwater. Um, they basically say so many good things about him, you know, his traits, and he's, he's quite quite a quite a closed off young man. And um, certain aspects of his personality show out in his game that some people would consider flaws. But you know, you've got to remember he's still a baby in goalkeeping terms. And mm. um, I mean, I've played in goal my whole life, so I've got a rough idea what I'm talking about. And I can see certain aspects of him in myself when I was young. And I came my, I came out of my shell. And Matt will come out of his shell. I mean, he's so talented. I mean, the boy is going to play at a really good level. Right now, he's got a nice, solid club to play at where he's going to find his feet and he's going to get himself match time and he'll develop. And I'm sure one day he'll get himself a chance to go into the Premier League. He's got the ability, yeah. you know, and it's fantastic that his roots are here in this football club and it's great to know that he's going to come down whenever he can to watch a game. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, he genuinely is one of our own. And I've got nothing but good things to say about the boy. Um, right, so... There, there were a few others, just to, just to sort of... Um, just to throw the names out, just so they're there. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, just quickly sort of throw them out. Um, Ricardo Batista, um, obviously 2006-2007. Scott Shearer and Jamie Young, mm -hmm. um, and possibly Ryan Allsop, depending on what happens this season. Um, so the goalkeeper I've actually picked is, is probably quite obvious, it's Martin Taylor. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, Martin Taylor, stand-up goalkeeper, um, and would, would fit into anyone's team that, that would be picked in around this era. Um, so yeah, that was, that was the standout. Yeah, choice. Taylor, um, to be honest with you, um, it was either Paul Hyde or Martin Taylor for me. Yeah. Um, Martin Taylor was so close to getting England recognition before mm. he broke his leg at South End. A phenomenal shot stopper, could kick with both feet, um, you know, command his area fairly well. You know, as he got on yeah. a little bit later, you know, the mobility started to go and he wasn't quite the same goalkeeper. But for the time he was here, a wonderful ambassador for the football club and a great servant, you know. Yeah. Uh, we will be very lucky to see someone of his ilk here again for a while. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, I like the pick. I'm all in favour of that. That's, that was good, wasn't it? So that was, that's a good yeah. solid start. Right, uh, so if we start, say, if we start from, I'm assuming you're going to stick with a 4-4-2 or would you want to do something uh, different? Yeah, we'll stick with a 4 4 Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so... If we start, say, at right fullback, then, so uh, throw me right fullback. Who did you pick at right back? Uh, the, well, first of all, the, if I go for the shortlist, just to tease you a bit more. Yeah, go for it. Um, Sam Stockley was, was very close mm -hmm. um, towards, the, towards the end of, I think it was the, the Paul Lambert era. Uh, I don't know if he was here with John Gorman. Um, Paul Lambert era and Peter Taylor's era as well. Um, I thought he was very, very solid. Um, wasn't as quick as maybe he, he looked like he could be. Um, obviously, when you're when you're chasing down a, a ball, you're it's quite quick. Right okay. um, so, yeah, I mean, in terms of other other backs, um, Lewis Hunt uh, 
with, with Peter Taylor, uh, Danny Foster and, and Marvin McCoy, I think, were, were the other ones. But the, the person I've chosen is Jamie Bates. Mm-hmm. Jamie Bates at right back. At um, right back? Really? Yeah. Okay. Jamie Bates That's at right back. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've gone for, gone for him at, at right back um, as... The, the person who I was going to pick at right back is, is in your team, so... Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't picked Danny Sender. To be, um, with you. to be fair, I thought of him... I probably thought of him as more of a, a Michael Harriman. Okay. Playing a bit further forward. But that, okay. was, that was my personal opinion. Yeah, I that's mean, fine. Um, maybe he, he should be playing at, at right back or, or whatever, but... Um, a bit like Michael Harriman, I don't think anybody saw foresaw him playing at right midfield this season. Mm-hmm. Um, possibly a few of you did, uh, if you saw him at, at Luton last year. But um, I think he was more of a fullback, wasn't he? Because Luton were playing with uh, sort of almost a back five, yeah, yeah. You know, but um, you know, he's certainly mobile enough mm. and uh, technically able enough to do. I mean, we've seen it this season, haven't we? Sort of went off the boil a tad when he signed, but um, you know he's still fairly yeah. effective. But you need to give him the ball. Yeah, you know, that's another story. You know. Yeah, definitely. But um, you know we can come on to that another time. Yeah, but definitely. right now we're carrying on picking the side. Okay, so if we switch over to the other flank, yeah. left back, left back. Now you will have to excuse me. I will have to refer. Yeah, to refer, my, please. Refer to my notes again. Um, well, it's it's another person in the in the uh, the era of, of Laurie Sanchez is Chris Vinnegan. Okay. Um, I I thought that I, I see a lot of comparisons between him and um, him and the likes of Craig Woodman and, and Joe Jacobson um, in in the way they play. Mm-hmm. Um, and but there's there's a bit more consistency with Chris Vinnegan. Um, he would sort of have five or six games where he was very quiet, but you'd still know he's there. Mm-hmm. Um, because he'd sort of be, be an unsung hero and, and just get on with his job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did his job very, he did his job very effectively. Um, it was quite well done. He started start his career at Rangers as a teammate of Ali McCoist. Mm-hmm. I think he played 20 odd games or so in Scotland. Yeah. I believe we signed him from Burnley, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. Solid performer, you knew what you were going to get, get with him. You know, very good defender. Not quite as um, an attacking threat going forward as uh, a couple of the left backs we've had down the years, but mm. um, from a defensive point of view, very solid. So, yeah, good yeah, choice. Definitely. Um, um, centre halves. Yeah, yeah. this would be interesting. Well, uh, I thought, well, one of, the, one of your centre halves you've put a right back, which I found quite interesting. Yeah. But, um, so, the ones you've picked, I'm going to be interested in. So the two, the two I picked, if I refer away again, uh, Paul McCarthy, uh, another one of the uh, Laurie Sanchez era, and then uh, if I talk, if I pick, if I say both of them first, and then and then refer back to them, uh, the other ones were Mike Williamson or Roger Johnson. Mm-hmm. Um, that was that. Still to this day, I cannot decide. Mm. Um, I cannot decide who who to put there. So. Um, Paul McCarthy uh, scored quite a lot of goals, mm. which when I when I first sort of looked at him and, and saw him play, I thought uh, possibly won't, possibly going to stay back quite a bit and, and defend quite a lot, but then surprised a few of us, I think. Um, uh, yeah, him. McCarthy, um, you could probably say it was Alan Smith's best signing. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Signed from Brighton. Um, it's quite well documented. He's very close with Roy Keane. Um, yeah, McCarthy um, wasn't what you would call a honey monster, a six to five honey monster. No, but um, he really was, looked like he was actually a very good footballer. A lot of people did give him the credit. He had a good no. first touch. Uh, his distribution was pretty good because at the time he was alongside Terry Evans in his last season. Mm. They were a pretty good foil for each other. And um, yeah, he. Um, I think he scored his first goal against Nottingham Forest in the League Cup, I believe. And um, yeah. very famously scored a goal against Wimbledon, the old Wimbledon. Yeah, in the, yeah. Uh, in the FA Cup run. And Gareth Ainsworth was playing for that team. Yeah, well. Ainsworth scored the opening goal that day. Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, and uh, he scored a 
bicycle kick, I think. Yes, know? that's right, yeah, but I can't Literally remember. Literally with seconds to go. I cannot yeah. remember who that was against. It was Wimbledon. Oh, it was. That, that, that was the, that's the same there we game. Go. <laughs> and then it went to the penalty yeah. kicks where the goalkeepers took penalties. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, memory uh, isn't that great, but, uh, but yeah. But, um, yeah, uh, McCarthy. And uh, as we know, he went on to our friends over in Oxford. So uh, yeah, we will never forgive him for that. Oh no, 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 no. don't be silly. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, solid defender, McCarthy. And uh, the and the other defensive slot was uh, so between Williamson and Johnson. Williamson and Roger Johnson. I I was. This is still it's still a very very hard decision. I mean, both um, now have Premier League experience. Um, with, with obviously Roger was um, at Birmingham um, and Williamson played uh, played for Newcastle and I think he's he's still there or he's possibly moved to funny enough Roger Johnson's old club Wolves. Um, yeah, I think that's where he went to. Yeah, the the first if I talk about Williamson as as he's sort of the the person that I put in the position first, he first stood out to me when we played Dagenham and Redbridge. Um, in the, the Peter Taylor uh, era, mm -hmm. and he scored two two headers from from a corner um, in in that exact same game. And I think, um, funny enough, one of our old players, Ben Strebens, played in that in that game, and, and I think he missed a penalty as well. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a little little side note to that one. Um, and and he really really stood out for me because I he was partnering uh, Dave McCracken. Mm -hmm. um, that day, and really, I really sort of started to take notice of him because uh, that that sort of era, Dave McCracken was my favourite, mm -hmm. uh, my favourite player, um, skipper of the side as well, obviously. Um, Williamson really, really started to stand out for me because I, I wasn't really too sure. Um, in and around that time, I, I was in and out of coming to games and I wasn't wasn't coming very regularly um, to to the matches and. Um, so only the only time I sort of ever saw Williamson, he never really had a great game. But then that game made me to take notice. I've um, got to be honest. From if you had to help hold a gun to my head to pick between the two, yeah, um, Williamson was actually on my short list to be right. the, one of my centre halves. Yeah, um, I'm a little bit biased towards the uh, the conference slash Wembley visit inside of the Martin O'Neill era. Well, it's course. just it's impossible it was not a great to be. It's impossible not to be. Um, Williamson was so calm on the ball. I can't remember him ever losing a header. And his distribution and technique from the back at the level we're playing at was terrific. Mm. You could just see Premiership defender written all over the guy. Mm. And, you know... For me, I would have to pick Williamson over Johnson. Okay. Um, I mean, I saw to, towards the period where, or in the period where Williamson and Roger played, it was, um, I, was, it was I wasn't really going to games that regularly, that, that period. Um, but the games I, I did see, Roger and, and Williamson stood up. Um, and, you know, I think Roger skippered us a few times. Um, Towards his, towards the time that he, he finished with us and, and went to Cardiff, and you could tell that that he was a, exactly like Williamson, really a, a Premiership defender, and you could tell that he was going to play. Yeah. yeah, when Roger first broke in, I wasn't convinced, but um, you could see right at the end of his tenure that mm. he was going to be something special as well. You know, old-fashioned yeah. centre half, big only monster, get your head in, you know. And he really, really, you know, became something. He probably was left. probably was very, very unlucky in, in the period where he was with Birmingham and they won the Carlin Cup, as it was called back then, against Arsenal. Um, he was probably very, very unlucky not to get an England call up because the state of the centre arts back then, I think that was um, just as as Rio and, and JT had, had sort of um, come, were, were coming to the end of their England career. Um, well, it, it wasn't. Whenever they were injured, they were always struggling to look for look for replacements. Mm. Um, he was, I, th I think, he was very, very unlucky not to get in. He certainly would have been in the running, would have thought. Mm. Especially even to get onto the plane to go to South Africa. 
Yeah, um, for the World Cup in, in 2010, I thought that it was him and his uh, his defensive partner Scott Dan. Um, I think they were, they were both in contention to go, but then of course they miraculously found form right at the end, and, and they were picked over over Roger and, and Scott. But um, so so yeah, I think they were they were very unlucky, or he was very unlucky focusing on Roger, obviously, um, not to get an England cap. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. So moving on from the back four. Yeah. The midfield. So if we start, if we go from right to left. Yeah. Uh, right mid. The gaffer. Right. Yeah. Gareth. Gareth okay. Ainsworth. Yeah. Um, the the reason behind him was uh, not only because of his influence on the pitch when he first came in, was because um, and I, and I, this isn't sort of a the defining reason why. Um, my favourite colour is blue. My favourite number is number seven. Mm-hmm. So whenever I saw Wickham play in that sort of period, I, I always sort of had a a bit of a a bit of a, a favouritism thing with with the player who always wore number seven. Um, just just that's why. Um, that's what that's what it was. And I mean, just so happened that, that Gareth happened to be a, a pretty decent player on the pitch as well. And I think in tribute to Gareth Ainsworth, you just have to ask supporters from virtually every club he's been to. He's always been a fan favourite. Um, you know, despite particular shortcomings in the current side as of late, you know, at the end of the day, it's still a Gareth Ainsworth side, and everything about the way the team operates is a reflection of him. Mm. You know, no nonsense, hard working, get your head in, get your foot in, you know, give your all. And obviously, there's certain other aspects of the uh, the team need to work on to become the finished article. But um, the team is in the mould of Gareth Ainsworth, and I thought it was terrific when he was here, he, albeit mm-hmm. for a short time. But uh, yeah, Gareth Ainsworth. I also had a lot of time for him. Uh, we we played this this game that um, will be remembered by me for for years. I mean, he scored his 100th goal away to Burton. Um, before the game, uh, myself and, uh, and a, a friend uh, and his, his dad, uh, his, my friend is, is uh, wheelchair bound and, and he's, he's not able to, to function um, properly as, as, as some of us can, um, unfortunately. He, uh, he made a lot of time for, for myself and, and my friend. He, he came over and, and everything and, and had a photo with us and, and, um, and everything. And, and the next game, I actually printed it off, and, and he said, "Oh yeah, I remember you. I remember you." And um, and and he signed my photo and everything, and, and was just absolutely down to earth, which epitomises everyone in, in the squad that we've got now. And, and yeah. I just thought that was absolutely brilliant because looking at, at footballers, some footballers now, uh, some of them are about the money, and, and they don't care. But, uh, not anyone here, I can tell you that. From yeah, yeah um, I think when you see things like that, um, there's nothing like it. You know, at the end of the day, there's a lot of young kids who come here, and something as simple as that, a little gesture like that, can really make somebody's day. You know, and regardless of what you think of the footballing profession, mm. they're out there, you know, in the public eye, and they are sort of role models to you know youngsters, and just simple things like that can really make somebody's day. Mm. Doesn't cost a penny. And, and it was, oh, I've, I actually found out that um, his birthday is two days after mine, and he's <laughs> got a brother with the same name as me, so that's brilliant. Um, and I just thought, you know, Small that's, world, that's, that's brilliant. I, I just absolutely, I just, as soon as I found that out, I was like, wow, that's, you know, a small world, exactly. Anyway, moving right, on. Right, so if we go into the central midfield area, yeah. So, uh, uh, let me just have a quick, yeah, oh, sorry, carry on. Yeah, so uh, two central midfielders. Two central midfielders, um, both, one still plays for the team, um, and one doesn't anymore, um, still still does play. I've got a feeling. One of them is Matt Bloomfield. Mm-hmm. Uh, 12 years at a football club for anyone now is unheard of. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, like, in, uh, non, in the semi-pro game you, you probably see it quite a lot on and things but in the professional game it's very very unheard of um, 
and he is one of one of our own, as is some of the other players that we've mentioned. Yeah, for the current the current generation, he certainly uh, you know he's been quoted as Mr. Wickham. Mm. Um, like you say, um, that I don't. he certainly had a renaissance this year. Um, I've yeah. got to be totally honest with you. I've always seen Matty as a squad player, so I couldn't really put him in my side. Yeah, if you know what I mean. And that's no disrespect to him. Of course, because yeah. he's a really nice chap. And um, I used to find he was a bit anonymous in games, but this year he's really sort of had a renaissance, and you can just see his experience on the pitch. You know, he's not particularly great in any one area of the game, but he's all round enough where you know he can actually be effective. Yeah. Again, you need to give him Definitely. the ball to feet. You know, yeah. um, he's a great leader on the pitch. Mm -hmm. You can see as he's matured at the football club, how much of a leader he's become. Yeah. Um, to the current generation of, say, 20-somethings who sort of have grown up with him, uh, you know, it's great to see somebody like that here. And um, I, think he's, I think he's earned himself a contract extension. Mm. I, I, I think that there's, there's no denying that. And, and his, his midfield partner at, at the moment, or when, when he's back fit, of course, uh, Luca and I, I think it will be his successor, hopefully. Yeah, they're very similar. I mean, um, a friend of mine who comes to the games virtually sees Luke O'Neill and there's a younger Matt Bloomfield. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I can actually see Luke growing into a more complete player. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to remember, Luke's literally just on the verge of completing his first full season in the Football League as a professional. Yeah, yeah, exactly. um, a lot of people are singing his praises now. Um, you just have to look at the boy. He loves being out there. You know, he's just constantly got a smile on his face, and he just looks fearless. You know, he, he's not frightened to try anything. I would love the team to utilise him more than they do because you tend to find the game bypasses him sometimes. He needs the ball at his feet. You know, let give him the ball and let the boy express himself. Yeah. You know, and. I'm pretty sure the manager is um, on the verge of extending his contract. That would be that would please a hell of a lot of people. Here's hoping, and, and fingers crossed, my my left or my other midfield partner will in this team will, will do Bloomfield justice, mm -hmm. um, and, and then we'll see what see what happens. Um, okay, so the second, yeah, the, the other midfield player is uh, is Russell Martin. The other central midfield player is, is Russell Martin. Um, yes, he, he played, I, I think he, uh, well, he now plays at centre back for, for Scotland and Norwich. Um, but uh, obviously, I think he, he did start off as a central midfielder with, uh, with Wickham. Um, I think during the tail end of his time here, I believe he was a right back. Yeah, so he, he can um, play anywhere. But even really. so, uh, there's enough about him where he could play in central midfield. Certainly. Yeah. So yeah. Well, that was that was one of the the hardest decisions because I wanted to include Jamie Baines. I wanted to include Russell Martin, but you know, and then I remembered obviously Russell Martin used to play in central midfield. So mm -hmm. uh, so during his time here, I've I've obviously picked the picked the team for players' performances and, and times at this club. And during the time here, he was he has played at central midfield. So, so yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. If um, you want to fit them in somewhere, there's nothing um, wrong with that. I seem to have scored, uh, I seem to remember him scoring a cracking goal in a, uh, four, I think it was a six goal thriller or Was it Macclesfield? Uh, Macclesfield, yeah. yeah. I think he lost 5-4 that day. Yeah, I, um, I, yeah, I, remember, I, cause I, think, I think we were about four, were we four nil down or something in that game? Yeah. After about 20 minutes? Um, Against a side like Macclesfield is a bit ridiculous, to be honest. But and that's no disrespect no. to Macclesfield supporters out there. Not. By the way, anything Liam says, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I'm not with this guy yet. <laughs> right? No, no. Um, yeah, I do. I do sort of say say things that are a bit sort of jovial, and, and there is no offence. No, of course as, there is. As, 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 as there never is. Um, okay, moving on to to my left midfield. Uh, if I have another quick look. My notes. It 
is, it's alright guys, you can come through, it's fine. It's alright, don't worry. Um, the, the guy playing on, uh, on the left side of the field is uh, Kevin Betsy. Okay, right. Kevin Betsy. Uh, again, it's sort of, um, th this team is, is probably a mixture of the team that won promotion with Gary Waddock, mm -hmm. uh, or Gary Waddock, Peter Taylor and, Mark, and um, Laurie Sanchez. Basically, it's a team of all of those mm -hmm. mixed together. Yeah, okay. Um, and some of the best ones from, from a, a couple of other managers as well. So, uh, Kevin Betsy, uh, in his first spell, nothing he could have done wrong. Absolute class player. Um, could play on the right, could play on the left. Um, could probably do a job up front. Yeah, yeah. Probably, probably do a job up front. Um, he was a lot younger in his, in his first spell, obviously. I think he signed from Bristol City, I think it might have been, mm -hmm. um, around 2005-ish. Is that long ago? I think so, uh, if my memory serves okay. correctly. Um, and then, then obviously he, he went away and uh, possibly played for Oldham or Southend, I think it might be. Um, I think it was Southend, I can't remember. Oh, obviously, uh, if, if you guys know, uh, know any different. Or if Kevin, if you want to. Yeah, <laughs> Kevin, if you're out there, please, please get in touch. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and obviously he, he went away and, and then came back. Um, I think it was towards, it, it, it was definitely there, I think we signed him on loan uh, when we were in our relegation battle in League One when Waddock first took over, mm -hmm. I think we signed him on loan that year, um, along with uh, another old favourite, John Akinde, um, at the same time. Mm. And I think his first game was, was when we lost 6-0 on the Sky to Huddersfield, which of course we'd done that again a couple of years later. Um, so I think that was one of his first games back. Um, and then obviously he, he came in on permanent and, uh, and we signed him, signed him on a permanent deal again. Uh, and he was one of the main players in, in getting us promotion mm -hmm. in around 2008-2009 era. Um, or even a bit later, um, yeah, he was he was one of the main players, and he he lost a bit of pace, um, but he had the brains, had the brains and, and the knowledge, and and as most of most of Russell's team, um, they, they'll obviously have have the legs and everything, but it's just the the age is is the key part really. I think the time catches up with everybody. Yeah, but, um, exactly. I mean, I'm sure if Gareth put a kit on tomorrow, I mean, it's mm. well documented he keeps himself fit. I'm sure he can do a job if necessary. Yeah. I mean, um, but he still plays Sunday league. We've had a 45 year old goalkeeper in goal this year, so yeah. let's face it, anything, any, can anyone can do it. Anything can happen. happen. Um, yeah. So, so that was um, that was the midfield. And, and that was that was a very very hard hard decision to make, sort of picking players in, in those positions. As a lot of honourable mentions, um, Sergio Torres. Um, yeah, Torres. Special mention for Torres actually. Yeah. For my cutting. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Torres was one of my favourite players to watch in the last ten years. Um, wonderfully entertaining, hard working. He, He's one of them players who just offered you something different, mm -hmm. you know, something that no one else in the team had. And as much as I would have liked to have seen him come back, they always say, you know, you know, never go Do back. Do you think he would have? I don't see why not. Um, you never know. So obviously he's, he's a conference south now. The only thing why is, it, it, you know, in, in the ten years, in the ten years or so, you know, since we last saw him. I think that the fact that his lack of mobility when we saw in the White Hawk game on the FA Cup, he was a totally yeah. different player mm. than the one we saw. Yeah. So, which of course is, is probably natural. You or... could probably say that Gareth Ainsworth was justified in his decision not to bring him back. Mm. You know, because um, probably uh, the same with Jermaine Easter as well to some extent. When yeah. He, before he joined Bristol Rovers, <clears throat> but. Um, yeah, maybe maybe that was one of them situations where you just want to leave the past in the past, you know, and enjoy him for what he was. Mm. But um, yeah, wonderfully talented player to watch on his day. Wonderfully talented. I mean, even my dad liked him. So that says that says a lot because <laughs> my dad hates everybody. Trust me. 
Yeah. Uh, okay, so my my strikers um, pick themselves. Mm. Jermaine Easter and Tommy Mooney. The the partnership is ex- almost exactly the same as as West, Mark, West, Mark West Western Scott. Scott. Yeah. yeah, almost exactly the same. I mean, it, you probably if you've never seen uh, them two play before. Honestly, I'd never seen the. Um, I, I was never there for for the Charlton game in the quarterfinals of the Carlton Cup. Mm-hmm. And if you'd have said that they, the goal that Easter scored against Chelsea and the goal that Easter scored against Charlton were exactly the same, mm-hmm. you probably and and you were a more educated supporter than myself. You'd probably say that's not surprising. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just goes to show, you know, football's such a simple game. Mm. You know, Mooney was your target man, even though not the biggest. Mm. And Easter was the small man, even though not the smallest. Yeah. But, you know, the concept was the same. And they were so effective because they knew what each other was doing, you know. And it, it was so simple. And it worked. We probably deserved, actually, to... If we maybe didn't have the cup runner, we possibly would have been promoted that year. Um, the, the cup run maybe got in the way a little bit um, of, of it. Yes, yeah, understandable. But, you um, know, for a club of our size, the cup run will automatically become the priority. Well, we you were, you know, we were two games away from, or three games away mm-hmm. from from being in Europe as we were in two thousand and seven, mm-hmm. uh, two thousand one. Even sorry, we were one game away from being in an FA Cup final and guaranteed a European place, yeah. which would be and, absolutely and ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. and the. The, the funny thing is, as silly as it sounds, you know, if those goals would have been achieved either either of those times, the complete overhaul of the football club to accommodate Europe and the financial, you know, mm. reward for it would have been unbelievable, you know. Um, I mean, no, no, so knows. so so near yet so yeah. far, you know. Um, yeah, so that's an interesting. Um, so just to recap on that, so um, just go through the team quickly for me. So, so in goal, Martin Taylor in goal, uh, Jamie Bates at right, right back, back. Uh, two yeah. centre halves. I'm going to pick a definite one now, going on, on obviously your experience as a supporter. Uh, I'm going to go with Paul McCarthy and then I'm going to pick Mike Williamson. Good man, the checks in the post. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, my 12th man will be Roger Johnson, so if you're watching Roger, you're not forgotten. Um, left back, Craig, uh, Chris Vinicom, I need to say Craig Woodman then, sorry Craig. Um, right mid is Gareth Ainsworth, the gaffer, and also the skipper on my side. Um, speaks for itself. Mm. Uh, two central midfielders, Matt Bloomfield and Russell Martin, uh, Mr Wickham in there alongside Russell. Um, left wing, Kevin Betsy, uh, and also while uh, while I mentioned Kevin Betsy, congratulations on being named the England under fifteen head coach. Yes, I saw well. that the other day. Yeah, good. Congratulations on on that as well. Um, fully deserved as someone of your quality, as as I've seen uh, coaching, someone of your quality deserves that. Um, so well done, mate. Um, up front, Easter and Rooney. Yeah, good. Right. Oh, well, the gaffer. Manager? Laurie Sanchez. Okay. Laurie yeah. Sanchez. Okay, um, yeah. It was very close. I, I nearly went with a player skipper in Ainsworth. Um, but he hasn't... A, a Wembley final and just about achieving... Uh, well, letting us... Uh, getting us to stay up in the division. Not quite as as uh, sort of heroic as as an FA Cup semi-final or, or getting us to Wembley and, and winning three trophies. Mm. Uh, you didn't fancy Tony Adams as player manager then? Oh no, know. not a chance. Okay. Um, no. not, not a chance. Okay, um, no worries. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll leave that one. I would have loved to, uh, Just on a side note, when Tony Adams was here, even though it didn't go as planned, as we might have mentioned before, I would have loved to have seen Tony Adams in Wickham shirt. He had only just retired from Arsenal. If he didn't have a player, that would be That would have been interesting. I would have liked to have seen that. Yeah. Um, and you're probably not the only one who, who feels feels that way. Mm. Um, but I don't don't quite think that uh, he's, he'll be justified. Uh, possibly even uh, John Gorman uh, in there as well as, as another honourable mention for, for the gaffer. But Laurie yeah, Sanchez. Oh, we've touched on this before. Yeah. I honestly thought that fellow was the guy to take us into the championship. We mm. were playing... St- oh. 
you know, if he came in today and got us playing that sort of stuff today, half the stuff that's ranted about online would be. Well, like there was that. there was a lot of a lot of things. Obviously, we, we don't know whether this was official or not, but there was a lot of uh, things about last year that they were that Gorman and Ainsworth were, were in a lot of discussions of um, about football things and about. Mm. Wickham Wanderers itself so whether that happened or not we can't confirm or deny I think while, we don't while we're on the subject I know you know fo fo footballers supporters are generally fickle we're all, we're all fickle you mm. know we have a bad game and we tear our season tickets up and we F and Jeff and we moan and whinge you know I've been following Wickham for 25 plus years and there's people out there who've been following Wickham you know, twice that length. Mm -hmm. The amount of tripe and rubbish I've seen in that time makes the current form look like a bloody cup run to Wembley. You know, it's so easy to, you know, get on your high horse and I would do this and I would do that mm -hmm. and this player should be doing this and this player should be doing that. You know, but you look at the positives out there Defensively, we're as solid as I've seen in years. Um, you start from the back and work your way forward. You know, everybody's making a mockery of this five-year plan, but at the end of the day, you've got to give the guy his due. They're doing what they can with the resources they've got. It'd be you interesting know, to see what a supporter would have done with, with, the, the, with the budget. What you've got to appreciate is, first and foremost, it's a results business. Mm. I can understand Gareth Ainsworth being, you know, apprehensive and, you know, almost conservative in his, you know, methods. You know, because he can go out there and play expansive free-flowing football, but if you get stuffed 6 nil, well, the chairman's going to say, on your bike. Yeah. And, you know, end of yeah. story. Yeah. And, you know, there's certain things that a lot of people are highlighting that, you know, they'd like to see change. But, you know, change comes, you know, gradually. And then when it doesn't work, do you want to see change again? It's, it's, a, it's a vicious circle, you know, um, there are things that I'd like to see changed or implemented, but, you know, things take time and, you know, you've got to remember, we're not down the bottom right now, we're in a solid position, you know, even if we don't make the playoffs this year, there's a solid foundation for next year where he can bring in people to fit around what he's got already. You know, there's a few players in the side who are starting to age. You know, having them around is great. But, you know, defensively, I think we're... Well, you just have to look at the record. I think, as, of, as we speak, we've got the best defensive record in the league. You know, and yeah. that can't be sniffed out. I don't remember us getting stuffed quite. People could say, oh, if it weren't for our defence, we'd be relegated. Well, the fact is, we have got a great defence. And it starts from the front. You know, you can't deny that. It's up to now the manager to take that into the reshaping of the side next year where he can then, you know, turn us into an attacking force. How he does that and the way he wants to go about it, we shall see, you know. But before people get on their high horses and start moaning, you've got to take, you know, look at the big picture. Yeah. At the end of the day, I've seen a hell of a lot worse out there on that oh, pitch yeah. than, yeah. We, you know, than we've seen already. It's frustrating and people do get annoyed, but you know, you just gotta stick with it. And at the end of the day, we know what needs looking at, we know what needs to be done, but I've got all the faith in the manager that he'll be able to turn it round. You know, there is a plan here in place. You just have to at the end of the five years, turn round and then we can give our opinions. Yeah. You know, not you know, everybody's got the right to their opinion, but let's have a look and see what happens at the end of the five years. Because I'll tell you what, if we're debt free and we're looking to make a dent at the top end of League One at the end of them five years, I will totally forget about the drosh on the football pitch now. Totally forget about it. Yeah. And it's, it all starts with um, tonight. So if you are watching, well, it would be possibly, this possibly won't go. Up, but um, if you you are watching, get behind the boys for the rest of the season. We've got big games coming up: Yeovil, um, Portsmouth away next on Saturday. Then Morecambe, no, not Morecambe, Accrington is that one. Yeah. Get those two confused all the time. And then the big one: Oxford United away. 
last game of the season. Get behind the boys, eh? And just to wrap up, um, well, basically, it's been good to have a chat, and no I'm, I'm very pleased to get your side out of you. It's not a problem. Um, well, so in the future, we will be coming back to you very soon. Um, in the comments below, please feel free to throw anything you like at the bottom after viewing this video. Any feedback is more than welcome. Um, we've got a Facebook page and a Twitter page out there. Uh, or you alternately can follow uh, moving on TV. Uh, dot, what was it? Moving on TV. UK. Moving on TV. UK. Okay. Uh, Lauren is in charge of that, and um, it's basically just follow that. And uh, if you wish to get in contact with us individually, you're more than welcome to. And uh, we'll see you uh, in the next program. So thank you very much, and we will see you for the matches. Uh, thank you, Liam. No worries. Okay. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and uh, right, we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>